We're about to go green for the first of three races at Charlotte Roval for the third round of the Mist Apex Motorsport Formula Reno Challenge. About to get going, and it's a green flag, and it looks like a clean getaway for Brad Philpot. Although it seems as though Danny Henney is pulling alongside and might just challenge around the outside into turn one. Philpot settles into the lead with Pinero uh, consolidating third place, but Henney is all over the back of Brad Philpot as they head through the infield section. Shelley maintains fourth place ahead of Dobitsberger, but Henney is looking every which way for a route past Brad Philpot for the lead of the race. Yeah, and actually they're all very, very clean through that first section. Uh, just looking back at Hatton and Harper, they are right together because John Lang uh, got the jump on Hatton at the start. And he is not finished yet. He's going to pull alongside once again, but again, being on the outside. And that might just open up the door for Pinero, who sticks his nose in. Oh, this is like a this is like proper oval racing as Pinero tries to get up into second place. Around the outside of the chicane, oh. and they make contact, and Pinero's round. Oh, and he's taken a few cars with him as well. So by the looks of it, he's been able to stay pointing in the right direction. No, he's gone round again, as you said, collecting a few other cars, and he's fallen right down the order. And Panera actually has got suspension damage, so he's pulled into the pits and is out of this race. Oh, wow, that's dramatic stuff for the uh, for the opening race. And I'll tell you what, Danny Henney, Danny Henney's still into the lead. He's passed Brad Philpot somehow. I don't know where it happened, but the top three with Edward Shelley right together as they head back onto the banking. So he must have done it somewhere in the infield section because he was six tenths of a second behind Philpot as they went over the line. Following this battle with uh, Focacci at the moment because he's trying to work his way into the top five and is closing in on Anil Singh as they head into the final chicane. He's got a good run of, out of the uh, chicane there as well. Could he make a lunge into the first corner? No, he thinks better of it. Uh, that's the too short a run between the two corners really, isn't there? Yeah, so you're very brave if you head into there side by side because there's walls everywhere. <laughs> He's uh, squabbling away over fifth place now. Oh, he just doesn't seem to be able to get the run he needs on Anil. That's it. These cars are a lot more fidgety and pointy compared to the MX-5. So uh, I think there's a, a lot more errors that creep in. Oh, Focacci makes a lunge. Yep. into the first corner and he's got Singh, it Singh got an awful run out of that chicane and Harper's that got might just too. open up the door yep, for Harper and he goes through oh did Danny Henney has made contact I think with uh, Michael Distelhoff as he was trying to lap him and now Philpot is all over him and he's going low onto the banking Henney's led him through so another change for the lead as Philpot reclaims that top spot Kyle Power is in 7th place and he started 24th so storming drive from him he's very quick but also he's, he's quite consistent he doesn't get, tend to get involved in silly incidents uh, and yeah he's making really good progress through the field so David Hatton in that 20th place he's got a fair bit of track to himself really he's 2.4 seconds behind Dobitsberger in 19th and has got uh, about the same margin to Hank Ensing in 21st so I think that's reverse grid pole pretty much settled for Hatton Brad on uh, lap 11 of 12, so he's about to start the final lap, just coming around the uh, second uh, oval section at turns 13 and 14 into the final chicane to start the final lap. Has he got front wing damage? It looks like he's got yeah, front wing damage. Yeah, he does. Yeah, front right. He must have clipped a wall somewhere, but he was a bit luckier than some of the other guys because so, he still managed to keep it on the on the black stuff. So I wonder if that's why he lost the lead to Danny Henney uh, early on, if uh, he uh, did end up in the wall somewhere, but was just able to carry on. Certainly hasn't hindered his pace. Five seconds ahead of Edward Shelley. And uh, it's uh, skitting around a little bit, isn't it? But um, he's been able to keep it going and crucially keep it fast. And uh, this this looks like it's going to be the end of the different winners streak. Brad Philpott will be our re first our first repeat winner in the Mist Apex Motorsport Formula Renault Challenge. And frankly, if we were going to bet on anyone to do it, you wouldn't have had a safer one than Brad. Danny Henney uh, now in eighth place, and he is chasing down uh, Conor Meyer, I think. So Brad Philpott out of the final chicane to take the checkered flag and to take the first win of the night here at the Charlotte Roval. Edward Shelley takes second place. Remarkable drive from him just ahead of uh, Tim Ellis as well. And Sam Harper, the championship leader, comes home in fourth place to take a big chunk out of uh, 
uh, David Hatton's uh, closing uh, advantage uh, on the uh, in the points, uh, and David Hatton uh, is uh, just coming out of the second chicane. Yeah, he's down. Yeah. So uh, it, it, he will start second on the grid for the first of the two reverse grid races. Green flags being waved, and I think David Hatton immediately has drawn alongside and is challenging for the lead on the way into turn one. But it's a brave man who tries to go around the outside. And actually, Colton Myers, the debutant, trying to get up the inside of the championship challenger. So he's not afraid to get his nose uh, in there. Uh, Matt Trumpets has consolidated fourth place with uh, Alexander Dobitsberger trying to get around him and uh, Custom Lemke uh, getting in there as well ahead of uh, Spanners, although it looks like he's coming under pressure from Danny Henney, the man who was battling for the win and was leading most of race one, takes two cars in as many corners. That's an aggressive move from the debutant, but he is uh, rapidly making his way up the field. After seeing that, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up uh, trying to battle for the podium or maybe even the win a little bit later on. Uh, Alexander Dobitsberger making moves on Matt Trumpets, uh, trying to go around the outside of the banking. And as uh, David Hatton makes a move for the lead into the chicane, down at turn 11, Hatton leads. That one was a little bit of carnage a bit further back, and Sam Harper, I was watching there just to see how he got through. He's made up seven positions on that first lap. He was going through the very tight section with all the walls, and there were cars spinning everywhere. He did a great job to avoid all of those. So Henny makes up another position. He's into fourth place ahead of Trumpets. So a huge amount of pressure being put on Colton uh, at the moment. I've got to say, he's doing a pretty good job of it so far, but you've got to feel Henny is about to come through. And uh, Henny surely is going to be pulling towards the uh, inside. He's got the line, although I think he, yeah, he thinks better of it. Oh, Colton goes for a spin and very nearly collects the orange car. Oh, a lot of drama going on down at the chicane. And Sam Harper is very much involved in that. I think he's just got past Matt Trumpet. And uh, we have uh, Brad Philpot involved in that as well. He's about to make a move on Trumpets as they head towards the final chicane. Doesn't make a lunge for it up the inside. And oh, actually, he goes off the circuit. Spanners, if I can find him. He is. He's in uh, fourth, so he's uh, he's in fourth under pressure. Place. Yeah, he's under pressure from Harper, and uh, Pinero is, is uh, rapidly bearing down on the two of them. So this could get very tasty very quickly for Spanners. So Harper, if he, he's in contention here to take another fourth place finish, which is how he's been getting this, these championship advantages anyway. And uh, yeah, it looks like he's going to do it now as he pulls out of the slipstream around the apron. And uh, I think he's going to be clear of him before they even get to the chicane. Yep. So that's fourth place for Sam Harper. All of these guys have made up a lot of positions. Sam Harper started 17th. Ramon Pinero started 29th. Brad Philpott started 20th on that reverse grid pole. So all these guys have done brilliant to, to keep out of trouble. And as far as I can see, no damage on any of those cars. Oh, and Pinero's got a run on him, though, out of the final chicane, and Harper doesn't fight it. He just lets him through because he needs to consolidate those points. This is on for the lead, and we've still got five, what, four laps to go after this one. Options running out for David Hatton, really, so this is going to be an immense drive if he's able to hold him off because Danny is just so much quicker at the moment. And uh, he's uh, having another look as they come out of turn eight. He's got a, a slightly better line through there, but this is where it's really going to count. Back onto the, uh, the banking on the apron and a great slipstream for him. Might be past him by the time they even get to the braking zone, although he's got to go the long way round. Hatton with the line on this occasion, but Henny is up, breaks him. Can he go around the outside? Yes, he can. Brilliant move for the lead by Danny Henny. So we got two tight battles that we'll try and keep you informed of, uh, but we'll keep our eyes on uh, fourth place for now. As uh, Pinero, a... once again, looking for a way past. Yeah, something that could make a bit of a difference is they're coming up to uh, lap traffic. Well, Pinero looks close, doesn't he? And th this time it's Philpot who looks like he was a little bit slow. Pinero takes to the banking. It's almost like he's not trying to pass Philpot. He's staying on the banking. I would say one thing that could be going on here actually is that he could be waiting until the final lap because what you don't want to do is you don't want to be in front with a with a punching a big hole for the guy behind. So maybe he's thinking, oh, and Panera's gone round. He's dropped it out of the chicane. So that's, well, Philpot definitely will be in fourth place now. And that's another point gained 
for Sam Harper. Last few opportunities coming up for Dobitsberger to try and take second place away from the man who was second in the championship going into this evening's racing. And it doesn't look like he's close enough to really challenge at the moment. That, that advance he's been making seems to have stopped. So one more chicane for Danny Henney to take a win on his Missed Apex Motorsport debut evening. Starting from 14th on the grid, he was battling for the win in race one. Had it taken away from him, but it's redemption in race two for Danny Henney, who takes his first Missed Apex Motorsport win. And who is going to be second? It is David Hatton, who takes a, a, a small bite out of Sam Harper's lead with Alexander Dobitsberger in third place. That is his second podium of the season for him as well. Brad Philpott will take fourth place as well after another great battle with Pinera and Sam Harper comes over the line in fifth place to confirm three championship points lost for him but he took a big chunk out in race one as well so uh, that championships lead still looking good for Sam Harper uh, did Pinero make it over the line in sixth he, indeed he did so slight you know a bit of uh, recompense for him uh, Yelly Ooms uh, in uh, seventh place Edward Shelley up to eighth from 19th on the grid Richard Span is ready with a top 10 finish in ninth and custom Lemke completes your top 10 and we're about to get underway green flag is being waved and it is a clean getaway for Ishmael Basso and Winfield immediately trying to challenge him on the way into turn one and Trevor Williams gets up the inside as well but Focacci it is making the moves into third place he goes Winfield challenging Basso as they head into the infield uh, section Alex Van Jean getting away well he's up into fourth place already ahead of Williams a debutant who's taking it easy uh, in his first uh, weekend of uh, Mist Apex Motorsport as we see Michael Disselhoff in the uh, the Malfa as Chris was calling it earlier getting in there as well and uh, James Wingfield already into the lead of the race and Focacci follows him through as well was that a mistake from Ishmael Basso because he has gone through and already into third place and clips the wall as they get into the banking section so Van Jean getting up the inside into third place as well Focacci up the inside as they go through round the banking section and Wingfield back down into second place Focacci the MX5 champion is in the lead but Wingfield is having another look up the inside into the 11 and 12 chicane oh Basso bouncing over the curbs trying to take Alex Van Jean who is able to avoid it. I think Basso might have gotten the slowdown penalty there because he's backing off. Yeah, a bit of an update for you down the back of the grid as well. There was a bit of carnage and both Phil Pot and Ramon Pinero are out of the race with damage. Steve Focacci crosses the line, starts lap two ahead of Wingfield and Alex Van Jean in third place. And no, Van Jean spun out of turn two and it's up and round over on his roof. Dramatic crash there. Top two, absolutely nose to tail though as they're coming uh, back out of the infield section and are about to head back onto the banking. Only three tenths of a second separated them as they went over the line and it looks like there's even less than that separating them now. Yeah, they're Oh, Fikachi's for for sure. gone from the lead of the race! I was just about to say he was extending his advantage. What 1.2 seconds but he's dropped it out of turn one and Wingfield goes through and takes it for Karchi's out he's he's back in the wall he's out yet yeah, severe suspension damage he's parked it up that is his race over so Wingfield on uh, lap four leads by five seconds over Tim Ellis Danny Henney has taken another chunk out of uh, his advantage though for second place he's only 1.4 seconds behind him now Connor Meyer is in fourth place David Hatton now fifth so uh, he could, uh, well, I wouldn't uh, discount a podium from him yet, actually. Sam Harper in uh, eighth place. And uh, as usual, his car looks uh, clean as a whistle. And uh, he's uh, putting the pressure on Custom Lemke for seventh place. Yeah, he's going to get a good drag down here. He's going to have to go outside around the banking. Ooh. But it looks like he's going to have a run up the inside at uh, turn 11 and goes through. Lemke very uh, compliant there with the championship leader. So up from uh, 23rd on the grid is uh, Carl Power in that uh, very distinguishable lime green and red number 26 car. And a so bit of an update uh, for you, Chris. Place. We've got uh, Wingfield, who was our leader. He's got he's in the pits with massive damage to that rear end. He must have dropped it somewhere. I was just about to say, he's disappeared from the timing line. So Tim Ellis leads the race by 3.6 seconds over Danny Henney. So surprisingly, uh, Trumpets is still circulating without a <laughs> rear engine cover. Or Do you really. think he knows? Uh, who knows? <laughs> so Tim Ellis on his final lap. 
Hayes coming around the apron and he's about to take his first Missed Apex Motorsport win uh, ahead of Danny Henney, who has been unable to, to challenge Ellis in this one. He's just got to keep it neat and tidy through this final lap. And uh, Tim Ellis will become our seventh different winner in eight races. Some might say it was gifted to him because James Wingfield was uh, looking pretty solid out at the front of this race early on. But uh, Tim Ellis has been the man who's been able to keep it on the road. And he comes over the line and takes the final win of the night. It's seven different winners in uh, eight races. And it's Danny Henney who takes second place. What a remarkable debut for Danny Henney. And David Hatton completes the podium. And Sam Harper should cross the line in fourth place. Indeed he does. So wow, wow, fantastic drive to, to keep the championship strong for him. Adam Rosales in fifth place and uh, Conor Meyer it was who won that battle for sixth place ahead of Colin Ward. Carl Power just snuck ahead of Sam Watley on the final lap there with Alexander Dobitsberger just nipping into the top 10 on that final lap as well ahead of Edward Shelley. And uh, further down, Richard Spanner's ready. Uh, 12th place for him. So he was able to get up ahead of uh, Custom Lemke there. Uh, Brad Philpott, 14th uh, in the end there. And uh, Trumpets with no rear wing, 17th, which I've got to say is pretty good. So after the third round of the Missed Apex Formula Renault Challenge, Sam Harper has once again extended his lead in the championship to 12 points over David Hatton, despite still only having one podium to his name this season. Tim Ellis' victory moves him closer to Edward Shelley, with Philpott moving up to fifth as our first repeat winner.